D, the flow of mercy. So, hi everybody, I'm Michael DiBanino. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Flow Immersive. And I actually met my co-founder at AWE in 2018, uh, Jason Marsh, which was right outside of Exhibit Hall A, uh, where we connected in Alliance. Um, and just out of a show of hands, who here was in, at AWE in 2018? Okay, interesting. So, I would say that you guys are the survivors, or we are the survivors of the VR winter to a certain degree. And I feel like this industry, has really learned a lot during this process, where those that have survived have figured out how to provide real value to either enterprise customers or to their consumer audiences. Um, but I think we've moved beyond this idea that we need a, a killer app, that there's one killer app that just gets everyone to jump this divide into headsets. And instead, thinking of it as this, as this metaverse, this, this continuum by which you have experiences. And I feel like we're at this really pivotal moment where we're starting to see all this happen. So if there's two things I want you to take away from this whole thing, and if you believe nothing of what I say, is that one, there's two waves. There's a wave for the metaverse, and there's a wave for data storytelling. Those are here, and they're here today. Um, so uh, you'll see I have a, a live link, and my new Wi-Fi here is going to be uh, difficult. But this is actually a live meeting, so this is flow. So what do we do? Flow ultimately solves three fundamental communication problems. How do we better engage an audience? How do we help them understand their content better? And how do we enable new forms of interaction? Now, I've noticed that there's someone there in the room uh, joining us, so I left that QR code up so people could join. This is actually a live, uh, live multi-user flow. Um, and by solving for these three things, we can drive better data-driven decisions in organizations, and in a sales use case, more sales conversions. Um, so how do we do this? We do it through data storytelling. So data storytelling is this cross between presentations, which allow you to add empathy, that adds the story, that's what people latch onto, as well as the analysis, the, the actual logical side, the data visualization. So it's the merging of these data visualization side with the empathy, the story that is data storytelling. This is not something we made up. We were touting it for a while, and now suddenly this is the latest last year, we've really seen it come into a fold. And a lot of that was due to COVID. Uh, people wanted to know what was going on. They wanted the story. Uh, and we got to see that firsthand. Um, so at a risk of embarrassing myself a lot, um, I'm just going to ask uh, directly, who here in the audience, just where raise a hand, follows my TikTok? OK, we got one. <laughs> OK, that's sort of what I anticipated. But I hope this helps to, to show. So these data stories that, that we present out into the world, um, have really been making an impact. Um, and uh, we'll get into how that impact is, or how we quantify that impact. Um, but first, let me tell you what a data story is. Um, and for those that are actually joining live, you can interact with this as well. Um, or if anyone's on the remote, uh, I'll put the QR code up just one more time. Um, so this is a data story I always start with. And uh, I show this not to have a deep political conversation, but rather to show an illustrative example of what is a data story. So this is a map of the US 2020 election on a county by county basis. And when Donald Trump saw a picture like this, he, he said the whole country voted red, that you see this sea of red. But that the counter argument to that is that land doesn't vote, people vote. And if we adjust the size of these bars based on the magnitude of votes, a very different story emerges. One where the population centers of the United States are really more democratic. And then there's one last view here where we're adding a bit of color to show that the country is a little less binary. And so the whole point of this is not to get political, but really to show how I can tell three different stories from one data set, and each one of those lenses allows you to understand it in a, a dynamic way. And you'll notice that I haven't really referred much to XR. Now, all of this works in XR, but in, real, in practical terms, around 90% of our customers are really mostly doing this in Zoom. Um, and that's great, because we're defining these new interactions. I can click on a dot, you can pull up more information, you can actually dynamically change this information. We have a lot of customers that use this more for scenario planning. I'm checking out my time, so I'm gonna move a little faster here. But hopefully you're getting the, the, the main premise here, which is that we're enabling data storytelling to happen. And we're doing that by having a flow editor, which allows you to create this content yourself, um, as well as a story creator and, and others, but how we consume it, how do we put it out into the world is so vital. Um, it's both a link you can go to, it's this live meeting aspect, but it's also these AR recordings that we can share with the world. 
And so as part of this metaverse, we see the 3D equivalent of these. And actually more specifically, an opportunity within the reward space, which I'm happy to, to comment more on. Um, and, you know, I was talking with Tim Tai yesterday. I think this would be a good sort of segue or, or final wrap-up. Um, and so I can talk more about enterprise customers, but what is the impact? What's the impact of all of these data stories? And I point to this uh, flow, which is my representation of my child's uh, life. It's every diaper change, it's every breastfeed, it's every uh, instance for the first seven weeks of her life. And I got like 15,000 people that saw it, so not like crazy, but my wife literally posted the exact same thing uh, yesterday, but it's about the storyteller. And she told that story about 1.4 million people, and she presented it to her company. And so when I talk about the impact, it's how do we start these conversations? How do we drive these conversations forward? And if we think about like climate change as the prime example, more data into this climate change repository is not going to do anything. But if we can more effectively communicate to world leaders and to other influencers, that's how we're going to start to move things forward. And we think XR is a huge part of that. Uh, cool. I know I'm going for so. So thank you. Uh, questions?